Right, so we're looking at plant tissues today, and I'll start with a sketch of the plant, so we know what part of the plant we are looking at. And we have that, and we have that. So if that is a plant, this would be the roots. Lots of branches. And also, we can talk of a cross section through that. We can also talk of a cross section across that and a cross section across. The leaf. So take note of these three sections. That. That. We have seen this. And that. Okay? Right. All you're trying to achieve is to understand the location and distribution of the xylem and phloem in the roots, the stem, and the leaf. So let's start with the roots. I'll do that here. I'll do the Stem over there, and the leaf over there. So if you cut across a single root like that, you end up with that. And so looking at it from this point of view, that's your eye. Okay? So I look at it from that point of view, this is what you will see. The first thing you should remember is that there's some form of cross-like or X or plus structure in the middle of the root. That is a, that's a giveaway to know that the cross-section of a root. I'm going to give the giveaway in the cross-section of the stem. You can look at that and you see these structures in a circular arrangement. So you can't mix these up. Stem and root. The leaf simply is that. So we are talking of going across the leaf like that, cutting across it like that. So this is what we are looking at. And once again the giveaway would be this and what I'll put is an X on top, so now we know that it's always the xylem on top. So this, that, and that are the three structures we need to make to take note of. For the roots, I'm going to just add a few more details. So here we have. The outer layer, now in biology the same words keep used over and over again. So epi being outer, endo being inner. So if you, have, you can talk of two rings of cells, we can talk of an outer epidermis and an inner endodermis. Okay, and the A 
epidermis. Easy? Now, between the endodermis and the epidermis, this region we will refer to as simply the cortex. Okay? Another giveaway for the positioning here now is the most important we are trying to explain, which is the xylem and the phloem. So one, xylem starts with an X, and actually in the roots, the xylem looks like an X. So this is the xylem. How easy is that? And in between the arms of the xylem, you have the phloem tissue. Now, okay, so epidermis, endodermis, phloem, xylem, the cortex, and with the cortical cells, the water moves across from the root hair cells, across the cortex to the endodermis, and obviously this is where you have the Casparian strip, which we'll be discussing later. I hope you are okay with the structure of the cross-section of the roots. Let's go to the step. As we said, the giveaway is always the circular arrangement of individual circular and the egg-like structure. I call it my eggs. It looks like eggs, isn't it? So, this are what we call vascular bundles. Once again, you have this layer of tissue around here. I'm sure you know what, what we are talking about now. This would be the epidermis, okay? This time, the cortex is actually, if I separate these two, this would be the pith. And this region around the vascular bundles would be the cortex, okay? This structure we call a vascular bundle. And the most important thing you must know is which of these, xylem or phloem, which of these is on the outside of the vascular bundle. Remember, the phloem is always on the outside and the xylem is on the inside. So that is the phloem and on the inside you have the xylem. Okay? So what then is this region between the phloem and the xylem. This is what we refer to as the vascular cambium. And the cambium we can, we can describe as they are like the stem cells within the plant, within the vascular bundle. These cambium cells can differentiate to become either xylem or phloem, so as the girth of the, of the tree or the plant expands, more xylem vessels, I mean, become redundant, old um, phloem vessels die, and then new ones are formed due to differentiation by the xylem. So actually, the cambium is also meristematic. Anything that is meristematic, they are like stem cells in the plant. They can um, differentiate to form any form of tissue in the plant. So, I'm sure we can clearly see the differences between the cross section of the roots and the cross section of the stem. For the cross section of the leaf, I'm sure most of us have done that, I mean, this year, see, so nothing has changed here, really. So, once again, you have the epidermis on the outer layer. And below the epidermis, you have the palisade mesophyll, which is usually a single layer of cells. And the giveaway, once again, 
is that these cells have lots of chloroplasts. So these cells are the most important so far as photosynthesis is concerned. Then, just below the palisade mesophyll, you have another set of mesophyll tissue which is actually more loosely bound in the, where there's a giveaway, spongy mesophyll. Which is lots of air spaces. In the lower epidermis, the key tissue you must refer to would be the stomata. Or now the stomata is not really a cell, the stomata is just a gap. So we are concerned with rather labeling the gap cells. So take note of that. The space in between is the stomata. And the cells that are around that space are the guard cells. Okay? And these are found in the lower epidermis. So let's label those quickly. That's upper epidermis. Lower epidermis. Spongy mesophyll. And as I said, if you can see this label, this is the policy mesophyll. Now, so that gives us the last bit to label, which will be another vascular bundle right here. Now, and that's the only thing you need to remember once again is, which is I get confused every time. So. Whenever I do this, I put an X at the top, just to make sure that I never forget that it's the xylem tissue that is on top, and then you have the phloem below. So this will be the phloem, xylem, and can we guess what this would be? That is the cambium, once again. Okay? Now, these are all drawings which refer, most importantly, to a cross section of the tissue. Okay? Let's not confuse these with a transverse section. In the transverse section, you are cutting it straight down and you are looking at we are looking at it from the side, okay? And that is the main thing. So we're going to look at the transverse section now, but this is a cross section of tissue from the stem, from the root stem to the leaf. Take note of that, and I'm sure it should be okay. So in transverse section, You'll be happy to know that you don't have to, separate, to differentiate between from the roots or the stem or the leaves. It's just the same structure, so you don't have to bother with that. All you're dealing with is to try and... The view from this time now is simply from the side. So if this is your... This is how you're looking at it. That is the stem. And we are now cutting through it this way, okay? So we split it like that and we want to look at the phloem and the xylem from the side like this, okay? And that's what I mean by this transverse section. Right, so first things first, the xylem is the easiest one. The xylem forms from original cells that were normal, had the nucleus, cell wall, cytoplasm, and everything. And then as they developed, these cells 
get liquefied. So let's think of this waterproof material being deposited on the outside, that's the lignin, okay? Now this waterproof material gets deposited on the outside, take note. And what happens? With time, because it's waterproof, no water can go in, no nutrients can go in, and so obviously these cells would die. And as they die out, what happens? They form this structure. So what you have left is simply a very thick wall structure. And this is what we call the lignin. Okay? Now take note that in books you may see that the lignification can happen in many patterns. So you can have the spiral lign lignification like that. And that's how the, the xylem may look like. You may also have what we call the, the reticulate pattern, which is a bit like that. That's also possible. Or you may also have just a normal siding like that with the bordered pits in at very various positions. Okay. Okay, so that is the main thing you should notice about the transverse section of the xylem. As I said, you have this um, the spiral reticulate, okay, and so on. Right. Let's move on now to the cross section of the the transverse section rather of the floor. Now, the first thing you notice is that the xylem is described as dead tissue, lignified cells that are literally dead tissue. We call them sclerenchyma tissue. Let's look at two minutes. Let's look at the phloem. The phloem is living tissue and it's made up of two simple components. A companion cell and a sieve tube. See what does the word sieve mean? You have holes in the end. So actually, that is the phloem. The sieve tube looks like that. On the end, you have the sieve plate. And within the sieve plate, you have holes we call sieve pores. So, this is the sieve tube. That is the companion cell. And these two work hand in hand. Why? Because the sieve tube needs to make way and space for translocation of materials, okay? And how can that happen unless there is space in it? If you allow the space, there is no other, there doesn't leave much room for the nucleus and cytoplasm and so on. So this companion cell takes over that role. So it has a nucleus. It has a mitochondria, and you have these gaps known as plasma dust matter. Which enable easy transfer of material from the easy communication to literally share the same cytoplasm between the companion cell and the safety. So together, that is the transverse section of the fluid. I hope we get that cleared up now. Thank you.